I, female 34, have a sister-in-law, 25. Let's call her Hallie. She's been together with my brother Jack, 32, for three years now. We were born in Europe, but originally from the Middle East. Hallie was born and raised in Europe. Our religion and culture are different from hers, but we didn't mind because she's a nice girl and we're open-minded. She really tries her best to please my brother in every way. She's learning Arabic, asking about the culture, and lately has started looking up recipes from our country too. My brother is very happy with everything she does, and if he's happy, then we are too. Last week they came to visit our whole family for lunch. Our family is pretty big with many cousins, kids, brothers, sisters, parents, and grandparents. Most of them were there. Hallie made a really popular meal from the country we originate from. Everyone was amazed by it. She left it in the kitchen with the other dishes for later. Well, to be fair, I'm cooking since I was a teen, and I'm a pretty good cook too. I was interested in how her food tasted, so I tried it. It wasn't bad, but I thought maybe I could fix it up with a bit of salt and spices. When we served the food for lunch, everyone complimented Hallie about the dish and how well she's done it. Here is where I might be the idiot. I told everyone that I fixed the food up with some salt and spices. Jack got very angry and started to argue with me in front of everyone. He told me there was nothing wrong with Hallie's meal and I shouldn't be disrespectful. But I believe in constructive criticism and I tried to help her learn. After they've gone and I saw Hallie crying in the car, my family told me I was an idiot and embarrassed our guest. I feel pretty bad. Am I the idiot? Edit. To clear things up, I didn't say it in a bad way. I told her I tried it myself, and for the first try, it tasted really good, but I thought it could use some salt and spices, so I put some more if you don't mind. Next time, it'll be even better. And I didn't want to steal the spotlight. I just wanted to be honest. You should feel bad. You are the idiot. You praise yourself as a good cook, and you decide to add spices so you can also get recognition for a dish you didn't make. Get over yourself and try to butt out of situations that have nothing to do with you. You are the idiot. You say I believe in constructive criticism, but what you did was neither constructive nor criticism. You made the incredibly presumptuous, selfish decision to mess with the food that someone else had prepared for guests without even asking her if that was okay or if she wanted your help or even your advice. That's not constructive criticism. It's food tampering and frowned upon in any context. You assumed that no one would like the food she'd prepared as it was and that it needed your expert additions. You could have easily salted and seasoned your own portion and let everyone else decide how they wanted theirs to taste. Instead, you injected your own opinion into everyone else's food without their knowledge or permission. Next time, if there is one, worry about your own plate rather than everyone else's. You sound like a dreadful, self-centered nightmare with absolutely no understanding that the world doesn't revolve around you. You need to learn to sit down, be quiet, and let other people shine sometimes. But you are the idiot, and your ego could use some deflating. Update. Am I the idiot for putting extra salt in my sister-in-law's food? Thank you all for your comments and all the criticism. Even though it was hard to admit at first, I messed up. After my post, I started to think things through and had a long conversation with my grandparents. A lot of trauma unfolded, and I realized why I was like this with my sister-in-law. When I was around her age, I had a similar personality to her. Shy, kind to everyone, always smiling, and being very positive. Then bad things happened, and I started to change. I became the anxious, negative person I am today. When she became part of the family, I realized how she was, and then I thought she needed to toughen up. I saw my old self in her and thought if she stayed like this, she'd get hurt. It was something in my subconscious. I didn't even think how toxic I actually was to her. I hurt her, hurt her brother, and embarrassed my family. I wanted to fix things, apologize and make sure nothing like this happens again. So I invited her over for lunch. Thankfully, she said yes. I looked up some recipes from her country and got to cooking. When she arrived, the food was ready. She tasted it and jokingly said, it could use some salt and spices. Oh my Lord, I deserve that. Ha ha. Then we had a conversation about our issues and cried. It was so wholesome. 
We promised each other we would cook something together every weekend. Then we went to my parents' house and almost everyone was there, who came to visit last time. I've apologized to the ones I've hurt and promised nothing like this will ever happen again. They forgave me. We had a good time. Lots of laughs, tea, and food. Before they left, I pulled my brother to the side and gave him my phone with a confirmation email. I rented the most romantic place ever for him and my sister-in-law to go and celebrate Christmas together. We will decorate the place with Jack in the next few days. And finally, I've decided to go to therapy and work on my issues for the sake of myself and my family too. These few days were intense and this was a huge wake-up call. One thing for sure, I wouldn't want to lose the ones I love the most. Thank you. You've done so much work in the past few days. I hope you're taking pride in all that you've done because it takes real strength of character to do as much self-reflection, action, and apologizing as you've done, especially in such a short amount of time. I really hope that you continue your work because it's already paying dividends and you deserve to be happy, well, and loved. So excited to see you reach out to your sister-in-law like this. All the best wishes. My parents prodded me, 23 male, to study hard, earn good grades, and involve myself in extracurriculars throughout high school. They constantly said things along the lines of, look at person A's sister, she's attending Harvard Law, and follow person B's example, he's doing an MBA at Stanford. I did as I was told and was accepted into one of the Ivy League universities. I vividly remember crying out of sheer happiness when I logged into the portal and saw my acceptance letter. I thought my parents would be just as excited as I was, but imagine my shock when they said, we think you should attend state school instead because it's a lot cheaper and just as good for your major, computer science, as the university. We earn X per month. The mortgage is Y per month. So we must support the family on Z per month. Where's the money for you to attend uni? They logged into their bank account and invited me to do the budget calculations myself. I saw them, saw that their numbers added up and declined my uni offer as much as it pained me. I went to state school for my bachelor's and master's in computer science. I currently work at a well-paying job, which means that I'll pay off my student loans relatively quickly. My parents said they'd pay the difference after I took out the max and federal loans per school year. My sister, nearly adult, called in December to tell me that she was accepted early into one of the Ivy League universities. I congratulated her on getting in and asked if our parents would force her to decline her offer as well due to the cost. She told me that dad told her not to worry about the cost. I then put two and two together, made an excuse to leave and hung up the phone. I couldn't believe that I hadn't put two and two together before that moment. My dad has worked at a different well-paid job since 2006. These companies give their employees a lot of stock per year, which meant that when I was getting my college acceptance letters, spring 2016, my dad's shares were worth hundreds of thousands, possibly even millions of dollars. As a result, my dad can pay for my sister's tuition by selling off some of his shares. The next time my parents FaceTimed me, I asked them why they were unwilling to sell some of my dad's shares when I was accepted into a well-paid job. They visibly tensed up and muttered something about how their financial decisions were none of my business. I told them that this was the last time I'd ever speak with them because they were liars who pulled a giant bait and switch on me. That all happened shortly before Christmas. The girlfriend asked me why I've been declining all their calls lately. After I explained to her why, she told me that she could see why I was angry, but she also told me that I really shouldn't be complaining as I'm in a better financial position than at least 95% of people our age. So, am I the idiot? Situation sucks. You are better off than most for this. Your girlfriend's correct, but what I'm hearing is that it isn't about the college choice or financial choice, but rather the clear favoritism towards your sister. It's your choice whether to move on or forgive, but in my years of being not the favorite sibling, it took me a long time to realize I don't forgive them for them. I do it for me. Bitterness sucks. I am low contact, and I'd suggest the same for you. That being said, yeah, you're not the idiot, but for your own mental and spiritual health, don't let it eat at you. Forgive and move on. 
that doesn't mean you need to keep them as centerpieces in your life. Forgive and move on? Absolutely not. Forget and move on. There was no apology, no explanation, no regret or shame. They have done nothing to earn forgiveness. Imagine all the stress they put on this person's childhood by stressing the importance of going Ivy League or similar. Then they got in. Then the parents pulled the plug. Agree. Being in a better financial position than others your age is a separate issue. Lying is lying no matter how your situation compares to others. Pushing you then pulling out the rug is awful. The main problem is they lied. That's a massive breach of trust. And now they're telling sister not to worry? I'm sorry, that has to hurt. And then they don't even offer to pay off the loans for the lower costing school that they pushed you to. Come on, you're totally justified in not talking to them ever, if you want. Or you could tell them to give you the same sum they gave her for school. All those stocks are way up now. They should be able to afford it. Or they can take out a loan. Serves them right. Whatever you do, not the idiot. You were lied to for years. Honestly, I don't believe I can be an idiot, but it doesn't hurt to check. My ex-wife, 33, and I, 33 male, were married for almost two years before we divorced six years ago. When we were dating, we talked about kids. I said I didn't want to be a father, and she felt the same way. A year after we got married, she said she started having second thoughts and decided she did want to be a mom. We tried to work this out, but there was no going back. Maybe I was just desperate to save my marriage because, other than that, we had a really great life together and we loved each other deeply. Then one day, she told me she was going to schedule an appointment with a fertility clinic to try to have a baby via IUI since I have refused to get her pregnant. And if I wanted to stay, then I needed to accept that we were going to have a baby. This wasn't going to work out for us. I wasn't ready to be a dad and she shouldn't be deprived of being a mom. So I filed for divorce. She didn't want me to leave, but it was the best thing to do. Year after the divorce, I became friends with my current wife, Addie. We became terrific friends and I fell hard for her. Addie was a single mom with a toddler daughter, so I was really conflicted at first about pursuing a relationship, but we made it work. The two made it so easy to fall entirely in love with them, and after being together for three years, we finally got married 10 months ago. My ex is still in contact with my siblings, which I'm fine with, and through them she learned that I not only remarried, but I was now a stepfather. My brother told me my ex wanted to talk, and after checking in with my wife, we met up for coffee to catch up. She showed me pictures of her young son, Robert, and she confessed that she felt a little cheated after learning about my new family, that according to her, I clearly didn't have much of a problem with kids, and we'd still be together, raising our family. I didn't know what to say, but I wasn't expecting her to tell me I should bond with Robert since he legally would have been my son if I hadn't divorced her. She became angry when I told her no and said I owed Robert for walking out on the marriage and he deserves to have a father. I left early because she was making no sense and my wife agrees that it's very unusual. I have no ties to Robert and how can I be a father to a kid I don't know? We have our own family and our own life. My brothers and parents have heard from both sides and they do feel I should step up for this kid. They're a bit biased though. While they adore my wife and stepdaughter, they still have a soft spot for my ex and have said she's had a hard time as a single mom and it would be really beneficial for Robert to have a father. Me refusing to be a part of his life is unfair to them since I obviously wasn't entirely against having kids as I said I was when we divorced. So, am I the idiot? I get that she feels cheated. I would too. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. There's a big difference between your wife telling you that she's doing IUI and you need to suck it up and meeting someone up front about already having a child. Not the idiot. I would honestly consider asking your family to distance themselves from her at this point because if I were your current wife, I would feel very strange. X tried to force this man to have kids before he was ready. She was like, my way or the highway. So he chose the highway. If he decided he was ready to be a dad a few years later, great. X was manipulative and controlling and unwilling to listen to her partner 
She doesn't get to worm her way back into OP's life now just because she regrets becoming a single mother. And for the record, she's still being manipulative, trying to guilt him into staying around for a kid that isn't his, and he didn't want in the first place. Sorry, dude. You are the idiot. You literally walked away from a perfectly good marriage because you didn't want to be a father and then married someone else to become an insta-dad? And you can't see why you're wrong? Okay. You made it blindingly clear you did not want a child to the point you chose divorce rather than parent with her. But you choose it with your new wife and now parent a kid? Essentially, you're willing to forego your deal breakers, just not with her. My ex gets our son during the week, and I get him on weekends. He's a pre-tween, and that's just my guy. Now, during the week with his mom, who I think is a wonderful woman, our personal issues aside, she's a good mom too. Things are tight on his ship. He's kept on a strict schedule. Everything is monitored and kept very orderly. When he's with me, we don't do schedules. If he feels like watching TV in his PJs until 11 a.m., fine. If he wants a few sodas, fine. I don't think the earth is going to collapse by allowing that. What annoys my ex is that, in her opinion, we do too much hanging out together. She would prefer if we have more productive weekends. We watch movies, order out. Sometimes he listens to music on my computer, and he likes doing that, which is a big issue for her. She has a nitpick for everything, it seems. I feel like, even when there have been times when I've had an issue with how she parents, I've kept quiet. I figure that nothing good will come from that conversation. That same respect isn't paid to me. She had a huge problem with this past weekend. She was irritated that I ordered three pizzas and let him watch the Kanye West Chicago show he did back in the summer. For her, it was like a junk food health hazard and a rap music on a young brain issue. My point to her was that we didn't sit there and eat three pizzas in one sitting. The majority of it was leftovers. And as far as the music thing, it was clean. I didn't recall any swear words. I told her I think she just looks for things to get mad about. And for some reason, can't stand that we get to have quality time. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Your quality time sounds like you're hanging with a buddy and not an impressionable child. Three pizzas in one weekend are not giving him a healthy diet and pure laziness. He's learning what it means to be a man from you and you're teaching him crap. Stop undermining his mother and step up. You are the idiot. I say this because she has to keep a tight ship. She's managing the entire school week. So preparing food, washing clothes, doing homework, helping him study, getting him to and from school and any extra events, and making sure he's going to school with a good night's sleep and a body full of healthy food to help him function. All you're doing is making your wife's week harder and harder. Your son is going to lean towards wanting to see you because it's more fun and will use this against his mother to make her feel less important. Not the idiot. Honestly, I don't think of a perspective like this. It's completely fine for OP to let his son be a kid and have a looser parenting style, but that's because it's the weekend. Honestly, I'd say OP should redo the schedule to get his son on some days during the week. This helps prevent a fun parent from forming and gives his mom a break during the week. Disagree. There's a difference between a looser parenting style and not parenting. I'm a teacher, and I can tell you I've had students that were like your son. We knew when they were at their dad's. At school the next day, they would be unsettled and usually defiant. Often, they're also very tired from all the junk food and late nights. You're setting your son up here. You're treating him like a bro rather than a son. This will cause serious division in how he sees his parents. And I don't even want to think of the teenage years.